Hey guys, Demon Seed back at you here on the YouTube network. And uh, I'm here with a follow up on the 3D Robotics Iris Plus. I've been doing lots of homework. I haven't studied this hard since I was in freaking college. Things you've got to learn before you can use the advanced functionality of the Iris Plus. Sure, you can take it out of the box, put the uh, landing gear on it, put the props on it, and fly it that fast within an hour. No problem. But if you want to set it up for mission planning and for the follow me feature, you're going to have to do a little bit of book work and watch some YouTube videos and get to know it before you can just go out there and do it. Now I do want to give you a few tips about the Iris Plus that I discovered in my uh, initial setup and flying it and getting used to it. One of the things is this telemetry radio, this is the radio that sends information to your aircraft and it receives information. So actually on your radio, you'll have on your radio battery, altitude, airspeed, all of that essential data right on your Turnigy radio that comes with your Iris. One of the things that I didn't know that I finally figured out was this cable. This cable has to be plugged in with the black end right here at the radio and the blue end at your Android device. Don't plug it in in reverse because it won't work. Now here's another thing I discovered about the Iris. On the inside of this door, there are wires that run from the LED indicator right there and the wiring runs up and inside of the drone you need to cover those with a piece of duct tape because when you put your battery in connect these battery leads and go to close this door you're going to hit those wires and potentially break them on the led indicator so put a piece of duct tape over those wires to protect them from your battery leads yesterday we took the iris out and we mounted a gopro camera directly to the front of the iris Right on the very front of the iris, there's a horn that sticks out for mounting a GoPro to. So we just took our standard GoPro uh, mount and attached it directly to the iris without any vibration dampener, without uh, a gimbal, nothing. And we wanted to see what kind of video we were going to get. The video was nice and smooth, absolutely no jello to speak of. I couldn't see any. So this thing is very, very, very stable in the air. You know, as long as you don't have chipped up props or something, you can fly it, you can film with just the GoPro and no gimbal. So if all you're interested in is shooting some great video from the air, unbox it, stick your GoPro on there, get out there and fly the hell out of it. All right, I'm gonna show you a few screens from Droid Planner. Droid Planner is fairly simple and an easy interface to get used to. There is a little bit of a learning curve there though, so you're going to have to do a little bit of homework to get used to using it. Setting waypoints and, and drawing a line as to where you want to go and creating a lawnmower pattern and all that is fairly straight up. But you want to make sure you set your altitudes correctly for each one of your waypoints. You want to let, let it know whether or not when it comes home to land or to loiter, etc. So choose each one of your waypoints separately and set up those parameters, okay? Now the other thing I want to remind you about is do not start your mission unless you're absolutely certain that you've uploaded the correct waypoint mission to the aircraft. Okay, we're gonna give it a shot. What could go wrong? <laughs> I've got my tablet here, which is not nearly as bright as it should be. And my map is very, very out of focus. So it's hard to tell exactly where we're at, but we figured that out using a conventional map as opposed to the hybrid satellite map. So we're gonna try that. I've got waypoint number one set right above us. So I'm gonna fly up first before I switch into the auto mode, and then it should take off and do a circle around us at 20 meters off the ground. You go into Droid Planner on your tablet, go into the mission editor, and just tap the screen either using the paintbrush or the uh, polygon or the waypoint 
flag and you can set your waypoints. On each of your waypoints, you'll see a little flag down at the bottom. Tap on those to set the altitude for each of your waypoints and how long the drone is going to delay at each of those waypoints or no delay at all and it'll just haul ass around the entire course. Once you've got all those set in there and you're sure that you know where it's going, then tap the three dots in the top right hand corner and I'll load this, I'll put it up on the screen, but uh, and then hit send mission. Waypoint saved to drone. And so now we've got the waypoint saved to the drone. We go back to the flight data and we arm the drone, armed. Warning, propellers will spin and drone may begin to fly. We click OK. Arm. And then you click Auto. We're heading up. Now our first waypoint is almost directly above us. So it just went to its first waypoint and now it's headed out toward waypoint number two. When it gets to waypoint number two, it should pause for five seconds. And there it is, it's at waypoint number two now and it should turn and head 45 degrees back toward us. And there it comes. Going for waypoint four. And it's going for waypoint four now. Now we've got six waypoints set up in there and on number five, we've got it to return to launch. So on number six, so when it, once it passes five and goes to six, it should come immediately back here. Going Headed for five now. And this thing boogies, I'll tell you, it's actually a lot faster than the Phantom when it comes to flying waypoints. I'm not sure if there's a way to set it so it flies slower or quicker or not. But, uh, and here we go back to waypoint six, which was return to launch. So there it is right over our heads. This is freaky. I'm telling you, you know, this isn't something that, you know, you want to send to your grandma for Christmas. You, like I said, you got to do a little bit of homework here and maybe it's just me. And here it comes down. <laughs> I still have control over it while it's auto landing. So it's taking its sweet time. Got the radio, not, not touching any of the controls. It just flew that entire mission by it, all by itself, completely autonomous. Pull your throttle all the way back down to zero and you're all said and done. So there you go, there's our first waypoint mission and I gotta tell you, I'm just exhausted because it, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of figuring out. You gotta get in there to the droid planner, planner and learn that shit, you know? So don't just start selecting waypoints and send it to the drone because what you might end up with is a mission to South Africa, which is what happened to me on my first waypoint planning mission. And I had to hit return to launch to cancel the mission to get that sucker back. So make sure that what you've uploaded to the drone is actually there. The way to find that out is actually after you have sent the mission to the drone and your, uh, your tablet says mission sent to drone, then hit load mission and it'll, it'll bring back down the mission that's actually on the drone. If that's different from what you sent up there, then fix it and send it back again. But check it by hitting load mission. Then you'll know what's actually on the UAV. All right, there it is for waypoint mission flying with the Iris Plus.